Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we are going to put together a Regal Ideas gate kit. It's up to 48 inch wide kit that's 36 inches tall textured black to match the existing rail system we have. I think I've only done one of these gates before and I know we didn't put it on video. So I'm kind of excited to show you guys this system and kind of figure it out together as we go through just uh, one last kind of final touch we're putting on this deck that we just finished in Auburn, Washington. So don't forget to click that subscribe button and let's get started. All right, so basically this kit comes in, it says 48 inch wide, narrow picket gate for 36 inch railing. Model number ASGP36-TV. So for anybody out there that might be interested in one of these, there you go. All right, so we're just gonna take all the parts out and identify everything. And then we'll kind of get to figuring out how to do it. Okay, I don't see any directions. I'm sure if we go to Regal's webpage, we'd be able to find it, but let's just take this thing apart and see what we got. So that's our one gate side of the gate. All right, so those are our top and bottom rails and they have an end welded to them. Another post for the other side and some bracketry. Oh, these are the hinges. Wow, a rather nice set of hinges. They're not spring loaded, but they're heavy duty. Okay, and then this must be the gate latch. Looks like there's a couple different options for mounting that as well. I think I'd have to go to the website really quick to verify installation. What I'm gonna do first is kind of decipher. I think I am gonna go to the webpage because I wanna decipher what my gaps are. I know what the opening is on my gate, but what does that mean as far as what do I make the parts, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is kind of mock this up really quick and know, okay, so I need to subtract a certain amount for this side of the gate, cause that's obviously, you know, five eighths of an inch, maybe three quarters. And then I gotta have a gap at the post location. It looks like they give us a couple different mounting options. Oh, that's kind of cool. So they have a couple different mounting options for the gate latch and it's kind of a twist snap in place. It's interesting. So if you twist this to get it to, to lock in, there's a groove right here and it just twists like sideways and then you just, a little bit sideways and then you just twist it and it locks it into place. This, and this is also a latch, so this will stay on the gate probably but there's some clearances that you have to know. All right, so Regal does have directions on everything you need to know about how to install this gate kit online. I just looked up the directions, so I read it. And basically what I have to do is I take my gate opening and I subtract six inches from it. And that's what I cut the top and bottom rail at. So that happens to be the actual opening's 38 and a quarter. So minus six inches is 32 and a quarter. So I'm gonna go over the chop saw and cut these two parts down to 32 and a quarter and then come back and start assembling this gate. All right, so we have our rails cut and it, the directions say to flush this gate rail to the bottom of the post. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna install the bottom one first, make sure it's where we want it. I'm not gonna go super tight on the screws cause I wanna be able to twist it a little bit if I need to. Looks like we're good. So I'm gonna get the top two in. Okay, the bottom rail's in on one side. Okay, now I'm gonna do the top rail and it says to make sure it's all the way up to the top cap. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I have the welded side of the gate together. Now I'm just gonna assemble this side. So it looks a little out of square. Let's see what we got for length first. Okay, so I know what's going on here is they're adjusting. When they say take six inches off, they already know that there's a quarter inch weld in here that we need to adjust for. And I had my bottom rail in too far. So now I pulled it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble the top, measure it, and then assemble the bottom, measure it, and then I'll make sure I'm square as well before I go too much further. I think we're probably pretty close, but I wanna be, if I'm 37 here, 36, so I'm gonna to go to 37 inches there. And now I'm gonna check it this way for square. I'm 51 inches and 51 inches. So that's money. All right, so we know we can go ahead and fasten this down. 
So I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna put one screw right here. And then I'm going to double check that 37 inch mark because that's really what I want. I just want the gate to be square and it is. It's nice and square right now. So be nail it before it moves. Usually on Regal stuff, we only have to put screws on one side, but because it's a gate, I'm gonna put them on both sides. Even if I run out of screws, I have spares, so no big deal. So now the next item that we do is we actually put in our pickets and our picket spacers. So let's get that done. Now we need to put in our pickets and our spacers and the top and bottom rails lock together. This is just like a standard Regal Ideas picket. You can see at the top right here, there's a notch. That notch actually locks into the rail, the top and the bottom rail. There's a groove in the picket, a notch in the bottom rail, a notch in the top rail, and it locks together. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, I don't really say there's a wrong way to do it. You just wanna make sure that your pickets get locked in. And that's gonna help keep this gate stable as well. All right, so there's one. So the way I do this is I start by not installing the first picket. I actually leave it in there loose. And you'll see why in a little bit. We'll get the rest of the run built. Okay, now that's close. We'll get the rest of the run built. Right now, we gotta figure out how many more pickets we need, and we gotta install them all now, or else we'll get stuck. So it looks like we're gonna need three more to finish. The good thing there's four in the kit, right? So we need three more to finish. So we gotta get all three of these in now, or else we're not gonna be able to get them in. Matter of fact, <laughs> we might have a problem already. So let me take this picket spacer off. Now I can get these last three pickets in here. Okay, now we can continue running picket spacers. And these picket spacers are usually three and seven eighths to three and 15 sixteenths. To code, you can't have more than a four inch gap between any particular space on a deck. So that's fine, because we know we're just gonna clear that. It's just so a child can't get their head stuck in the middle of the rail or anything catastrophic like that. You know, that might not look bad either if we just left the picket against the post or near it versus running a very small gap on each end. But we'll uh, we'll take a look at it here in a sec because I don't think I have the four inches or three. No, I'm at three and a half, three and a quarter up here, three and three eighths down here. Oh, OK, I see why. So all this needs to be knocked over a little bit. Yeah, now we're a little bit closer. So there's two ways I can do this. I know that normally I would have to have a full width gap here and then I will take this, the difference from this, between these two pickets and these two pickets, and I'll put in a small spacer. So I think that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna move all this stuff over a good half inch or so. Okay, now we can get our last set of full width picket spacers in, and we'll see what we have left over. Okay, over here I have a, almost nothing. Okay, so the way I'm gonna figure this out is I'm gonna go ahead and measure this side. I have three and an eighth. And on this side, I've got a half inch. My overall openings for both sides, if I took three and an eighth and added a half, it's three and five eighths. So I need to take half of three and five eighths and make my starter picket spacers half of that. So half of three and five eighths would be an inch and a half plus five sixteenths. So an inch and three quarters plus. So I'm gonna cut my first two picket spacers at an inch and three quarters plus, knock all the pickets over, and then measure the last two and cut those in. So I'll be right back. All right, so I have my picket spacers cut to an inch and three quarters plus. When I say plus or minus, I'm just adding a 16th to an inch and three quarters. So if you really wanted the technical measurement, it'd be an inch and 13 sixteenths for all you technical people out there. Now I got everybody covered. All right, so I'm gonna put those two spacers in. Now I have committed myself to that spacing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock all these pickets over all the way tight. All right, now I have this side in, the spacer that we cut, and then we have the standard picket spacers in between the rest, and now I'm gonna measure this far side and see what my, my measurements are. Hopefully they're the same, they should be close. So down here I have an inch and a half minus, and the same up here. So basically, we were a 16th inch off, which I'm, I'm good with. I can cut these a little bit smaller. This gap's a little bit smaller than this gap. 
but I'm not tripping, okay? I'm not gonna recut these spacers for a 16th. I'll just cut these two spacers and then the gate's ready to be hung with the hardware. So let's get those cut and get those installed and take this thing upstairs and get it on the deck. All right, so I have cut my other side picket spacers and they are ready to go in. Go ahead and stick these in. There we go. All right, so there's our completed gate. Yeah? Awesome. So now I just need to figure out which side do we swing it from and which side do we is the latch go on. We'll, we'll go take a couple boards and temporarily suspend this in place and then we'll get it attached and get it installed. Okay, so we have our gate built. I verified the fact that that six inch subtraction was correct. So we have the proper opening for our gate, which is awesome. But you'll notice, I just have a couple of two inch blocks, some scrap Azek holding up the gate right now. And you can kind of see that I'm a little low, like my elevation's a little low. So I'm gonna shim this up so that it's at the right height, like so. Okay, I just have a couple shims here. I'm just gonna drop one on this side and I like the height there. We're really low over here. I like that height and we're just a tidge low here now, but it's so very close, but it is a little low. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bust this shim and see if we can't get it. Yeah, right there. That's very close. I kind of like it on both sides. So now that I know my height, I'm gonna go ahead and start installing these hinges. These hinges actually have four screws per corner. So that's kind of nice. Uh, it gives it a little more stability and will allow this gate to last a little bit longer in the future. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my first set of screws in. I'm gonna get a few screws in this gate. We still have four more screws to add. But for now, it's it's sitting good. Now, I just wanna go over here and double check and make sure I'm very happy with this height. Cause right now I have the option to adjust it, okay? I can make it a little taller, which I'm gonna do, just make it a little bit taller in case this gate, gate wants to sag a little bit when I bust it loose. I'm just gonna make this post just a tiny bit taller to see if that'll uh, kind of offset it. it. It's a calculated risk, but I think it's one worth taking. I might even give us a little bit more height because I have a feeling that might be too much. We'll go with that. I'm banking that this post is gonna sag just a little bit. I gotta make sure the gate latch is gonna work and then I'll figure out the height thing in a minute. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. Now this side, I'm gonna take off the edge just a little bit. So we got our hinges partially installed. Yeah, when I pulled that shim, it did drop a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna re-shim this post so it pulls it this way so that when I, when I pull the, the post this way, it dropped more than I wanted it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that before I put in any of this side of the gate hardware over here. But to finish up the hinge side, I still gotta add these uh, eight screws. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so that hinge side's done. This side of the gate is installed. I like the way it looks. The heights are pretty good on the posts. Uh, the only thing I'm not crazy about is the fact that this post is a little lower than this one. And so I really want this to be kind of like that. So the best way for me to do that is probably to remove this base plate cover and actually adjust the level of this post. Even if this post is completely plumb right now, I'm gonna knock it out of plumb this way so that my gate will raise up a little bit because I couldn't really make the adjustment in the hinges. I'm gonna make it in the post instead. So that's what I'm gonna do now is these are all siliconed in. So I'll have to reinstall that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tighten these two outside bolts on the outside of this post to try and force it this way. So here it goes. I definitely felt it move. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one again. And let's see what that does for our elevation of our gate. I like it. That worked out perfect. So this silicone's still a little wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on here and uh, let it do its thing. We have the gate installed. We like the way, as long as nobody rides this as a game, we'll be fine. Now we have to install our latch and our pin. So what I like to do is kind of set them up here and decide, okay, where do I want to put the pin? Where do I want the latch to go? And then I got to install one or the other. I'm going to start by installing the latch because it's easier to set the pin in place once the latch is in place. So I'm happy with this height. So here goes the latch. 
usually when I run these tech screws, these Regal Ideas tech screws do, do work very well. You just want to slow down and then knock it in at the end, okay? And then I'm gonna run two more screws over here. Awesome. Oh, I made a mistake. You actually have to snap this on and then put in the screws. And then the last thing we gotta do, guys, is put on our pin, and this will hold the gate shut. So I usually put my pins a little high because I know this gate might sag in the future, okay? I don't usually let my uh, pin sag too far, so I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit high. There is an adjustment for elevation for the future, so if you need to loosen this screw, I'm gonna put the elevation, right? Let's see, it's probably gonna need to be up, so I'm gonna put it towards the top of the hole but I'm still gonna get a, a little bit of room to breathe in case we have to move it down in the future. Then this one, again, I'll put it towards the top. Cause odds are this is gonna have to be moved up in the future. And then I'm gonna add two more screws on the side. Again, these are adjustable as well. So I'm gonna put them closer to the top. So there's a quarter inch of play for the future for this at least. Done. All right, guys. So that's the Regal Ideas gate kit. I think it worked out rather well. It opens up to a full 90 over here, so that's awesome. Keeps the little ones from just leaving at reckless abandon. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for coming to our channel and uh, leave your questions below. Have a great day.